Years ago, the Soroban was born. In America, they're hardly ever found. But in the Japanese forest, rumor has it, there's still a few that roam free. And that is where we venture now. Hello, my name is Paul Busi, and it's breaking news. It is raining right now. Back to you, Chad. Wait, what was that? Did you hear that? I didn't hear anything. Oh, it was my imagination. I thought I heard the dogle of the great Soroban, a Japanese advocate modernized 1930s and adopted from the Chinese version, but it was just my imagination. We now go to Explore Liz, expert in Sorobon. Hello, I'm Explore Liz, an expert in Sorobon. I've been hunting the Sorobon for years now, in the outback of Japan. In ancient times, the Sorobon was used for counting large numbers. In Roman times, the abacuses were made out of metal or stone. Invented in Japan, <laughs> it was named the Soroban in the 1930s. <laughs> Although there are now electronic calculators, the Soroban is still used to help develop mental calculation skills in the young Japanese population. The more quality Sorobons are made out of wood, like these. Ah, what a beaut. Ah, look at that Soroban over there. It can also be made out of other materials, such as clay and plastic. If you manage to catch one of these, you can use it for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Dividing? Damn! I'm releasing this view back into the wild. Wait, did you hear that? That sounded like the Great Sorobon! <gasps> there it is! <gasps> catch it before it gets away! No! Ah! Uh. Ah, you may have caught me, but to use me, you must master me. But how are we going to master the Soroban? It's alright, I got this YouTube video. S O R O B A N Soroban. Oh, hi, I have see you there. Welcome to. Starring Elizabeth Chan, Paul Sun, and Tori Senpai. There are many different uses for the Soroban. You can add, <gasps> subtract, what? multiply, no, and divide. Oh, oh my, my god. god! First, you must learn the basics. The beads on the upper deck represent five, and the four beads on the lower deck each represent one. Each column is a different value place, so the first columns would be the ones, and the second column would be the tens, and so on. So, this would be 5. And this would be 55. 555, and this would continue on. Now that you've learned the basics, you can start learning the different operations. First off is... Adding! <laughs> The first thing you do is place from the sword bound the number that you want to add to. For example, if you wanted to add 33 to 42, you would indicate 42 on the sword bound. Then you would add 33 to it. Since you cannot add three singular beads to the two, you have to add the five and the remainder and take away the remainder two. Then you add the three to the four. Since you can't add four your beads, you have to repeat the process, and you should be left with the answer of 75. Now for a harder example. Let's try adding 89 to 128. First, you place 128 on the Soroban. When you are adding the 9 to the 8, your answer will be over 9. When this happens, you have to carry a 1 over to the next column and reset the column you're working on back to 0. Resetting the column counts as 1, and then you simply add the remaining number to the column. You should have 7 left on this column. Next, add the 8 to the 3. When you're doing this, you, will have, a, you have to carry it again. You should get the answer to be 217. 
Now for subtracting. Subtracting is very similar to adding. You just do the opposite. Let's try subtracting 21 from 32. First place 32 on the thoroughbound. Then subtract 1 from the 2 and 2 from the 3. The answer should be 11. Now for a harder example. Let's try subtracting 28 from 45. Place 45 on the thoroughbound. To subtract 8 from the 5, you have to borrow 10 from the left column. Subtract one bead from the column directly to the left, and now you can subtract 8 from 15 to get 7. Just finish the subtraction now, and the answer should be 17. For multiplying. When multiplying numbers, you want to place both the numbers on the Sorbon on different ends and work in the middle. Let's try 21 times 3. Place 21 on the left and 3 on the right. Now, in the middle, multiply 3 times 1 to get 3. On the column directly to the left of your answer, do 2 times 3 to get 6. Clear the starting number so the only number left on the Sorbonne is 63, the answer. Now for a harder one, let's try 23 times 17. Place both numbers on the board once again. Now start by multiplying 7 and 3, and put the answer 21 in the middle. Then you multiply the 3 and the 1. Adding your answer to the 2 from 21 you got previously. The number in the incomplete answer should read 51 at this point. Now you times 17 by 2, adding the 34 to your incomplete answer. When adding the numbers, remember to leave a 0 to hold your place. Your answer should read as 391. For dividing. As with multiplying, you place both numbers onto the soroban when dividing. Let's try 951 divided by 3. Place 3 and 951 onto the soroban. Think how many times can 3 go into 9 and place that number onto the soroban as part of the answer. Since 3 can go into 9 3 times, place 3 into the middle and subtract 9 from the 9. Now you have to think how many times can 3 go into 5 and place that number to the right of your answer. Since 3 cannot go evenly into 5 and only once, you subtract 3 from the 5. That should leave you with 21. Now all you have to do is divide 21 by 3 to get 7, so that your answer should read 317. Now for a harder example. As a more difficult one, let's try dividing 275 by 25. Again, place both numbers onto the soroban. 25 cannot go into 2, but it can go into 27 once with 2 left over. Now just divide 25 into 25, and you should get the answer of 11. You should now be an expert at multiplication, adding, dividing, and subtraction on the soroban. Thanks for watching. Bonsai! Yay! God, that video sucked. Yeah, let's find another.